Okay. Good day, Northwest. Hello, Aaron. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Terry. How are you this very fine day? Doing wonderfully. We are here again recording another cast of One Month to Live. Uh, we've been going through this study. This is our third cast. I think, uh, as we know, the other two have just blown up. They've gone global, which has been fantastic. So we keep doing them. So, yeah. what's your defi- definition of global? You know, I think global. like it's seen across the world. There's like over a hundred views. Wow. We hit. We hit. We hit the outer space yet? I think we did. I think it's triple oh. digits. Yeah. I don't know if aliens count as views. We'll have to check mm. on that. So yeah. We will. YouTube agreement tells us that. I think. Yeah, exactly. So we're continuing, we're continuing on in our lesson, and as you recall from last time, we finished the uh, we're at the four sections of the book. There's uh, the third section that we finished last week, which was the owl section. Now we're on to the deer section, which is about leaving boldly, thinking about 30 days left, one month to live in our lives. Uh, this last section, leaving boldly. Um, this is probably, I thought, the section that people think about most uh, if you go through this study that if their life is coming to an end, if you have one month to live, that this is the section that would apply most to people because how will you leave your life? Yeah, it's, it's, it's looking back at what you want to be remembered for. And that's, you know, so many people get so focused on that uh, that sometimes they, f- they forget about other things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really about who, 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 how are people going to remember you in the future? Exactly, the legacy that we leave. The legacy we leave. And so yeah, we so jump, the quote. yeah, we we are jumping right in. An interesting quote uh, from John Erskine, if I get that correct. Let's tell young people the best books are yet to be written. The best painting, the best government, the best of everything is yet to be done by them. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times, you know, when we're talking about uh, legacies, we think about ourselves. Mm-hmm. But so one of the best legacy moments we can give is to encourage you know, our young folks to really make a difference and to believe in themselves. Right, exactly. And I think we way too often when we think of just, um, you know, the legacies, it's, it's, it's just about us. And, and what can I actually do to make life better for somebody else? Uh, right. that's, a, that's a great focus. Yeah, legacies sometimes become about accumulations, right? What can I accumulate as I go through life? But this study, this chapter especially, uh, really turns that on its head. That's right. That's right. And, and, you know, not to pick on our, our president, Mr. Trump, but, you know, make America great again is, is one of those things that always seems to be looking backwards. Mm-hmm. And, and how do we actually look forward, you know, to encourage people to, to be different and look and, tr- and try to create something that's new and, and great and not just look back as a part of life. Right. Future focus, not past focus. Future focus. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting that when we, when we talk about, you know, what's left, uh, the, uh, the sandcastle, uh, image, which which the author brought up several times. Um, it, it's really kind of a, an interesting combination of kids and um, you know, do the kids when they're building a castle realize that a sand castle isn't permanent, right? You do all this work, you spend the time out there, you get a little sunburn, you get a little sand in, uh, in great places. And, and what you're creating is something that all of a sudden when the water comes in is going to be gone. Right, right. This gets washed away, right? Washed away. The kids spend so much time and so much effort and are so happy to do this and happy to build it all the day that they spend on it. And then all of a sudden, whoops, hey, the evening comes, the tide rolls in, and it just, it all gets washed away. It's all. Yeah. Yeah, And and kids, when they're young, they don't understand, you know, that the tide is coming, you know, and and so that they need to be, that it's going to happen. Right. Um, But, and I, I think the old folks, us, we get, we get, um, we forget about that as well, that, you know what, there's a time coming when everything we've done here on earth is not going to matter either. Right. Yeah. The adults get focused on building our own sandcastles, right? Um, Jeannie Gardner, she told a story about the time that her mom, I think it was her mom that passed away and they went down one Saturday to clean everything out and get her, you know, house all in order to be sold. And Jeannie really reflected on the fact that within a few hours, uh, this house was clean there was no evidence that her mom ever lived there. Everything that her mom had accumulated, had built over the years, everything that was important to her mom was just gone. The next people that were going to look at that house had no idea who lived there, what she was about, who she was, anything about her. And it just, it felt very 
uh, impactful to Genie like a sandcastle. It's all those years building and just gets washed away. Yeah, it happens so fast. We don't, we don't uh, see it coming sometimes, even though maybe we should. Uh, yeah. But all of a sudden, we seem to be surprised at that point in life when the tide comes in. Exactly. So how do we avoid feeling like that we're building sandcastles? If we're talking about our legacy and one month to live, how do we avoid feeling like the things we're doing are just sandcastles? Yeah, it's a tough question because it can be different for every person. You know, what are we doing? But one of the most important things that we can actually do is to invest in things. And, and what is the investment that we can make most often that really is going to make a difference is in people. Mm. I mean, when we're, you know, in our church communities, you know, the, the new families or in our own families, the young kids, you know, you know, just, just people who need extra to support where, where are we putting in our resources to actually make a difference or investing our resources. And that really should be people. Right. Yeah. Are we investing in people or are we investing in stuff? Um, I'd like to add to that Luke ten twenty seven. right? Um, it reads, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. If you're going to invest in people, uh, people require love, people require effort. So this verse kind of sums it up. Love God and love people. This is the legacy that we can leave. Yeah, an all-in legacy, right? Lot, lots, to, lots to kind of absorb there. You right. know, the, the, the author really breaks, breaks it down into three different areas. And we're going to go through these fairly quickly. But the first one is influence. Three. Influence evaluation, affluence inspection, and obedience exam. These are, these are affluence and obedience exam. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Influence, affluence, and obedience. Got it. So, so the, the first one, influence, you know, we're all given a limited number of opportunities to influence somebody. To make a difference in their lives. And how are we spending those, those, those touch points? Right. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the, how, do we, how do we interact with people? Right. How do we influence them? Yeah. I mean, you know, if we're, if, if, anytime you're given a limited number of touch points, how are you actually, you know, making those count? You know, it's really interesting. You know, I thought, thought about the parable of talents from, I think it's Matthew 25. Um, you know, each of those were given a number, a, a, a different number of, of talents. Um, you know, and are we going to actually use those talents to reach out and try to influence an individual or are we going to bury it? Right, right. Are we going to wait for maybe the perfect moment or uh, are we just going to take chances and take risks, especially on people, right? Like I right. like said, people are messy. People require effort and um, our opportunity to influence them, uh, we may only have one moment, right? Let's make the most of it, like you said. Yeah. And, and can we actually think about that before we go into one of those situations or is it, oh, after the fact, oh, you know what? You know, that was my opportunity. I think, I think this happened in um, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, mm -hmm. where Jack... Uh, Jack and, um, uh oh, the other guy. Commodore? No. Oh. Um, Which other guy? There's several other guys. There are several other guys. You know, I should never start telling a story that I don't know the end of, Terry. That's the part. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, dude. The guy it you're. It does. Age, the guy who likes the girl. The guy oh, the girl. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Jack and then, uh, yeah, mm -hmm, the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, you know, it's, it's one of those, those times in the movie where he should have said something to mm -hmm. her and made a difference in her. And Jack, as soon as, as soon as she walks away from that situation, Jack walks up to whatever his name is. Other guy. Will, that's it. Will. Mm -hmm. Will. Will. And he says, if you were looking for your moment, that was it. Right, right. How true, how true. So uh, that's a great point, right? Influence, we, we should be prepared, we should be ready for any of those moments like that. We've got a trainer at work, a guy named Steve Thomas, and he'll tell us all the time that you influence people every day, every moment. You influence, you don't have a choice, you are constantly mm -hmm. influencing people. Your choice is to influence them positively or negatively. And so if you recognize that, if you recognize that, hey, I influence people no matter what, um, how am I going to do it? You realize it's just like a running river, a, a continuous stream that um, I need to figure out a way to influence people in a positive way, to invest in people in a positive way, to help leave a lasting legacy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we're always we're always uh, impacting for the good or the bad, right? Mm -hmm. Let's let's right. actually decide we're going to do it for the good. All right, this is our influence. This is number that, one influence. That was yes, number one influence evaluation. Number two, two. affluence. Affluence inspection. You're making a lot of background noise there, buddy. Sorry. 
How's this? That's better. Okay. That you could have been the wind. Could have been the wind outside. Oh, it is very windy. That's a good point. It is very windy. Yeah, we'll have to edit that part out. So where were we? Um, affluence. Affluence. This guy looks affluent. Affluence inspection. That's right. If we're going to have an impact on eternity, you have to consider how you're going to spend your resources. And a lot of times we think about this in, in material aspects, right? Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, a, you know, clear person with uh, with affluence. Mm -hmm. You know, how exactly are we going to spend that on other people to make a difference? Right. And is this is this what we think of when we think of affluence? Is it just material things? Is it just wealth? Um, is it just comfort? Isn't affluence more than just material things? It is absolutely more, but I think a lot of times we stop at, at uh, the, the money, right? Well, I'm giving money to this, I'm giving money to that. We stop there, but it is so much more. Right. Yeah, there's other things, right? Like how we influence people, how we take care of people with our affluence. Uh, Luke 12, 21 points that out. This is how it'll be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. Are we rich toward God and are we rich toward other people and use our affluence uh, to influence people? That's right. Yeah. It's not just uh, the money, but it's, it's, it's our time. It's, 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 you know, time is such a resource. And right now we're finding maybe our, ourselves with more time at home. Right. Um, you know, but but when the rest of life kicks back up, are, are we going to be so busy again that we can't spend a few minutes helping those out who really need help, whether it's with our money or, or with just, you know, 10, 15 minutes or, or hour or two hours of our time? Right. Um, is, it, is it more than just wealth? Is it our effort? Is it the love that we demonstrate on people? Um, we are abundant here in this country of affluence. And so what do we choose to do that to influence yep. people and to leave a legacy? Yeah, and we know that just like the, the parable of the talents is God is going to call us to account on exactly how we spend this. You know, are we considering this our money or is it God's money that we are, are really just managing for him? Just with our time as well. Is it our time or is it the time God has given us that he's going to call us to account on? Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, also to point out too, a side note, I mean, there's nothing wrong with wealth. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. fine. But it's all about what we choose to do with it. Do we choose to store up for ourselves or do we choose to uh, spend it and spend ourselves on others? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Now moving to the third one, the obedience exam. Obedience. Obedience. A, a very sure about this. Yes. A good verse from Ephesians 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Make the most of every opportunity are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love this verse, right? Be careful. Be very careful then. There's a translation, uh, the voice translation that starts this passage with make the most. Make the most of every opportunity. This is Bella. Say hello, Bella. Hi, Bella. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you make the most doing? of your time, Bella. Just get right into the picture. Make the most of your time, doggo. Yeah, so I love that. Make the most, right? If we think about that, this, this follows the theme of what we're talking about in this chapter. Are we making the most of the time that we have, the time that we're given um, to influence others and to leave a lasting legacy? Yeah, the obedience. And he just, he gives us just enough time to everything you need to get done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and a lot of times we always think, oh, we don't have enough time. But, you know, God's given us just enough if we're focused on what really needs to happen. And, and, and through obedience, we can do this. Right. Just like your example uh, from Pirates with Jack and the other guy, um, there's moments. It doesn't have to be days. It doesn't have to be weeks or years. There are, there are simply sometimes just moments where 10 seconds, two sentences, uh, a short conversation with someone, um, that could make all the difference. That's right. And we need to be obedient to that. We can't miss it. Right. Absolutely. So what if I was asked, or I asked you to give yourself a grade on these, to grade mm -hmm. yourself on influence, affluence, and obedience, Terry, how would you do? Ooh, do I have to? Uh, well, no, you don't have to. <laughs> you, I would I probably be embarrassed at my grade. I'm yeah, sure I, I would. It's the truth, isn't it? But a lot of times when we look at, like, you know, back at the last month's calendar, mm -hmm. it, it grades itself for us. You know, rather than us having to actually think about what my grade is, look at, look at what your calendar was and, and were you actually out there influencing something or, or spending time or money on someone uh, or, or being obedient to what God was calling you to do? 
Right. Was I leaving a legacy, a lasting legacy that God calls us to do, or was I just building my own sandcastles? Yeah, building your own sandcastles and crying when they fell over. Right. I do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, because yeah, you live on the beach out there, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about legacy a little bit. Yeah, legacy. Leaving a legacy. Think? That's what this chapter is really the whole theme is about, right? Yeah, exactly. And did you know that I... I preached my one and only sermon at Northwest on this topic. One and only sermon? You should talk and, to somebody about that. You should do another one. You're pretty good. No, I'm pretty sure that my one and only is still my one and only. <laughs> it was your audition and didn't go so well. It didn't go so well. That, and that was a long time ago. That's right. Oh. Probably nobody remembers this, and that's a good thing. But, um, you know, in order to leave a legacy, we have to actually live a legacy. Uh, and I'm a Timothy. Um, and that's as in Paul's Timothy, the person who stuck with Paul through, you know, kind of thick and thin. Um, and, and it was really his right hand man. But that's not really why I consider myself a Timothy. Um, Timothy was blessed with a legacy. And, and as it talks about in 2 Timothy 1, Paul refers to Timothy's legacy when he, when he refers to his, his grandmother, Lois, and then his mother, Eunice, uh, uh, both who had a huge impact on, on Timothy. And, and I can say that clearly for myself, as my mother and my grandmother were, were key in, in who I have become hmm. and how I think about so much of the world. Uh, they were the, probably the two biggest people um, in my life for most of my life. Well, you are, Timothy. I had no idea, Aaron. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Really cool. It is pretty cool. But, but as, as I start thinking about the, the, you know, the legacy I'm leaving with my, my children is, is, you know, what Jesus do my girls see in me each and every day? Right, right. That's a and great then, what, yeah, Jesus then, does, what do people see in us? What Jesus do people see in us every day? Not just you, but not just your girls, but just even out in public, right? That's right. Yeah, and, and so many of the people who know us and, and our, our, our neighbors and the people I work with, you know, what, what Jesus are they actually seeing day in and day out? Or, or are they not seeing any Jesus coming out of us? Right. Or what do, they, what do strangers see out on the road if we have a, uh, a scripture on our back window or a cross or a fish? Then uh, That's right. we're terrible traffic. We're terrible yeah. people in traffic. What That's right. legacy does that leave with them? You know, we never actually talked to them. We never interacted mm -hmm. with them. But we influence them. We left an impression. That's right. You know, what will I leave behind that actually stands the test of time? Right. You know, my, my father's tombstone, my father died when I was very young. Um, his tombstone actually says this, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that was also his legacy from, from what, I'm, what I'm told. But, my, but it was for me, it was for my mom and my grandmother who really made that biggest, biggest impact on me. Hmm, that's a great legacy. I think unlike some of us, right? So sometimes I feel like I'm an adult building a sandcastle after going through this chapter and really evaluating it. I thought, yeah, am I, am I just doing this as an adult? Have I not grown up from a kid and don't understand the things that I'm amassing, accumulating will just be washed away someday? Where's my lasting legacy? Too much yeah. of my life feels like it's on sand sometimes. Absolutely. And you look at that sandcastle and it's beautiful. There's some <laughs> intricate details, some outstanding things about that. But you know what? When the rains come or when the uh, tide comes in, mm -hmm. It's right. going to be the same, same as a little kid that had just a, a couple little shells and a, and a bump. Right, exactly. Or some angry kid who thinks he's Godzilla and wants to tear down the sandcastle. <laughs> it could yeah. happen too. And then yeah, all of a sudden, like, come on. Was that personal experience or were you the Godzilla? No, no, I could picture myself doing that as a kid. So that's probably why it came to my head. Yeah, that's maybe, right. Maybe as an adult too. Yeah. You know, and, and finishing off the, um, you know, the Timothy Example, you know, the, the from First Timothy six twenty, Timothy guard what has been entrusted to your care. You know, there's so much that I feel that's been entrusted to me that 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 verse really resonates. Is I need to guard that and to make sure that, you know, the legacy I'm leaving is going to be the same as what my mom and my grandma left with me. It is so important that I guard that specifically for my family. Right. Yeah. Do we realize that we have been entrusted? Right. Mm. With stuff when we go back to what we said earlier about making the most do we recognize that the reason we make the most is because we've been entrusted we've been entrusted with valuable things in our lives um, and that we should guard them yep 
Yep, very much so, very much so. And one more slide, I think. And this is, yeah. this is always an interesting concept, right? A man has made at least a start on discovering the meaning of human life when he plants shade trees under which he knows full well he will never sit. And I think mm -hmm. I also heard um, someone say this recently, that there's two times to plant a tree. One is 30 years ago, and number two is today. Mm. How true, how true. Is that from Pirates also? Is that one? No, of I don't think that was from Pirates. I actually have no idea where that came from. But that's a great concept, right? So this this is uh, this really hits the head. It's the nail on the head with what we're talking about. Is leaving a legacy means that you don't always get to see maybe the fruits of that legacy. Like building a sandcastle. You know, I'm done. I've accomplished this. This is great. You know, look at what I built. But mm -hmm. instead, realizing that sometimes you'll start things that won't get finished in your lifetime, but you're leaving them for someone else because they've been entrusted to you. That's right. And that's so important to do that. Yeah, and again, you don't always know who it will be. Yes, you, you probably planted that tree for your children or your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. But just imagine all the other people who get to sit under that tree and also enjoy it that you would never know. And that, that's, again, why it is so important to be careful of who we are and who we're influencing and, and the obedience factor, um, because we're, in, we're always influencing many more people than we actually realize we're influencing. Exactly, exactly. Well, I think that's it for today, Aaron. This is a pretty good lesson, uh, pretty powerful. Hopefully, if it was deep. Have a book, it was very deep. They can read the yeah. chapter and uh, make comments on the links below, in the comments section below, I think, Facebook and YouTube. And I don't know how you beam this uh, interplanetary-wise, but... Uh, yeah, we'll have to look into that. Yeah, see how we can translate those comments. So, Max, excellent idea. Yes. Good to see you all yep. as always, man. Thank you very yep. much. Everybody, Pleasure, take Terry. care. Stay well. You as well. Take care. See you next time. Next time, guys. Bye bye. Bye. So Aaron, uh, I had an afterthought after we went through this lesson. I was hoping we could take a minute to discuss this. Absolutely. I love, I love afterthoughts. Uh, afterthoughts, they're the best. So uh, a guy named Alan Moreland uh, reminded me about The Mandalorian. If you've seen this series on uh, Disney+, Plus, it's actually a yeah. really great series. And there's uh, some stuff that comes in kind of part of the theme of one of the seasons is really about uh, the Mandalorian and the legacy that he leaves. It's actually really interesting. Um, let me see if I can talk about this without giving away too many spoilers and you can stop me if I give away a little spoiler. Uh, we'll have to that's, that's right. It's a well worth a watch. Yes. So for people who don't know, uh, maybe if they're not a big Star Wars fan, so the Mandalorian is a bounty hunter, a lot like Boba Fett in some of the original movies. If you've seen any of the original movies, you know Boba Fett's a bounty hunter in that uh, genre also and so the mandalorian mando they call him is a bounty hunter in this series called the mandalorian um he's a very good bounty hunter he's probably the best um this is what he has uh, been born and bred for and he's defined his life this way by being a really great bounty hunter um he's actually even quoted as saying you know i can bring you in warm or i can bring you in cold <laughs> so he is he is serious about being a great bounty hunter. This is his legacy, right? This is um, pretty intense. So everyone even knows him, right? His reputation precedes him. Everywhere he goes, there's a character in the series, Carl Weathers. He plays um, Grief Karga. And one of his quotes is, well, they all know you, Mando. They hate you because you're a legend, right? So even mm -hmm. across the universe, he has this reputation, right? He has a, a legacy that he's leaving. Um, this is how he's defined his life. Now, um, somewhere along the way, I don't want to give too much away here, but somewhere along the way, his, his path changes a little bit. And That's he right. realizes that maybe this isn't the legacy that he should be leaving, right? You kind of felt that through some of the seasons and some of the episodes. Um, and he gets transformed. Uh, I'd like to think that he gets transformed from his heart, from the inside out. Uh, but you'll have to watch the series and decide for yourself. Um, right. 
but it puts him on a different path. And I think the reason that ties into this chapter, to this section, is that some people might look at this and think, yeah, I've already set a legacy. I'm, I'm already too old, or I've already, I'm already set in my ways, or people already know me a certain way, or be, they make judgments about me because of the way that I talk, or the way that I look, or the way that I've lived my life, or people judge me on past mistakes. Um, think about that, right? A bounty hunter hated by mm-hmm. people. They judge him on his past mistakes, but he made a pretty quick change and a pretty quick uh, path uh, leads him to a different legacy. A different legacy. Yeah. So, and it's, um, it points out that we can really be transformed, right? And it doesn't require a huge amount of effort. It doesn't require Herculean efforts to be transformed, but it could be one thing. Like we talked about in the earlier moments, that there could just be a moment, right? It could just be something that someone says to you, something that happens, some incident, some situation, that right. all of a sudden now you're transformed. That's right. And, and he, is, he is definitely in the process of leaving a new legacy, but it, it doesn't mean that his past is gone. Right. He continues to have to deal with his past, and that's just like for us. Mm-hmm. We're going to, regardless of when we actually begin to make those legacy changes, parts of our past are not going to be gone. Right. It's how you continue to move forward in the right direction. Exactly. And how you deal with people who might want to still label you by your past. Like we said at the beginning, um, you, we oftentimes look to the past and not to the future. And people want to keep you where you are, right? Okay. Especially if they've got a leg up on you. If they feel like they're superior to you, they're going to try to keep you in that place. And that's, that's right. hard. And that's, that's probably why people give up when they try to change their past. They that's try right. to change their legacy. And because it's exhausting, especially it to let you know. That's right. And, and Mando is a great example of that. Yeah, it, the, the fight is exhausting. Mm-hmm. There are many opportunities for, for him to, to go back to his normal ways. And, and he continually chooses not to for a very specific reason which we won't tell you, but a fa- <laughs> it really is a fascinating look at someone, um, you know, tr- really trying to change, you know, the past, become right. a new legacy. It's, it's almost like a Western, a, a Star Wars Western. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I'd actually recommend it. I don't know if uh, it's for everyone, but if you like the Star Wars stuff, uh, it's actually pretty good. It's pretty well done. It starts off a little slow, but um, there's a lot of intensity that builds, that it builds to. And yes. especially if you're a Star Wars fan, there's lots of Easter eggs and lots of hidden things and lots of, oh my, I can't believe that's how that all, and you tie these things together that yep. really makes some great sense. So you guys enjoyed it, right? Uh, absolutely enjoyed it. All the kids, and uh, yeah, I, I especially enjoyed it. Yeah, a little slower than your typical um, Star Wars movie, but well-made and a great story. Right, absolutely. And it's about leaving a legacy, right? You can, it, it is about. Watch this. If you watch this series, you'll see the theme, the legacy that we leave. That's right. And some good humor in it, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that was my thoughts on Mandalorian. Oh, great. You did a great job bringing the, a post scene credit in. Yeah, thanks for, the, thanks for listening. I appreciate that. Thanks to Alan Moreland. It was his idea. He said, good job, Alan. Mandalorian. I'm like, okay, thanks, Alan. <laughs> okay, see you again next time, Aaron. Okay, see you. Bye. Bye.